It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Well, welcome everyone to the Mayor's Report. We're back here in Pottsville, the Mayor's Office, Mayor Dave Clues. Uh, things are doing great. Uh, we, once again, thank you for making the Sam LaSant Show the number one talk show in Northeastern Pennsylvania. Based on my good friends at the Susquehanna Polling and Research, uh, number one polling company in the, in the country. Um, all of our shows, particularly this show, is seen on our website, which is ssptv.com, and of course, all of our neighborhood programs. So, uh, Dave Clues, the mayor of Pottsville, how are you? Doing well, Sam. Pleasure to have you back. I saw something interesting this morning. Uh -oh. A bumper sticker. Oh, yeah? And it said, I hope, you, I hope something good happens to you today. And I thought about this. I hope something good happens to you today. And certainly, you're not the person who well, happened. You came to Pottsville. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's true. But I saw my my son, which is good. I saw my good friend, uh, Father Sader, who is good. Uh, and now I I met Karen. You're the only thing that brought this entire morning down already. So it's, it's you know it's, it's just a shame that you just bring. I'm consistent. Down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and another thing, I was at an airport when I was uh, coming back from uh, the Bahamas with my family many years ago, and we we had a you know in the lounge. And, and, of course, the waitress came over, and she had a, a badge. You know what it said? It says, attitude is everything. And I thought to myself, isn't that great? You know, attitude is everything. Uh, with, with the world the way it is today, and, and everybody is so uptight about things, you know, you you got to have a little laughter. you got to have a little, you know, relaxation in your life. You know, don't you find things, you know, the people just are so, so tense. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's for sure, some more than others. And, you know, that, that's one of the things that, you know, since I've been here in City Hall and, you know, I was on council, that there's always been a, a, you know, a good spirit here in the building. And uh, may, maybe sometimes it gets away a little, a little much, but, you know, everybody's smiling, everybody's happy. We know we have a lot of, and, and I, call, I, I told our staff the other day, I said, remember, there are customers coming through the door. You know, and they're not all happy because they're usually here paying sure? bills yeah. or, you know, yeah. uh, something along those lines. But, you know, it, if they see that, you know, we're happy doing what we're doing and we treat them as a customer here to help them, it makes everything so much better. It makes your job more enjoyable. The, per the citizen coming in has a more enjoyable experience and what, you know, with a little change in attitude goes from a confrontation to making a new friend. So it, it's, you know, nice. That attitude is a big thing. That's a major you know? thing, you know, and, and it's just like you hear, you know, well, she has a pretty bad attitude. Well, you know, uh, uh, in a service job, it's, it's difficult. And like you said, people are coming here, they may have, have a ticket that they're upset about, they're mad about this, they're mad about that. That other person that's taking the blunt is going to have to relay that, you know, that attitude, you know, give them a, a decent response, I would think. I mean, right. Right, and again, this attitude, if you, know, if it, you start it confrontational, it's probably going to end that way. If yeah. you, you know, express it, you know, you're happy to see them, you're here to try and help, you know, it, it certainly you know, creates a different path and hopefully to a much better outcome. Don't you feel, Dave, and I mentioned this at Rotary when I was speaking to them, that you, you try to surround yourself with people who are positive. Now, I know things happen in life that are not always the greatest things, but people who surround themselves with people who have a good attitude and, and positive, you know, they don't need the negative people. You know, I, I hate people where you're saying, what a beautiful day it is today, and or enjoy that. Yeah, but it's going to rain tomorrow morning, and there's a hurricane in Timbuktu. It's a, you know, and then you say, well, you know, I feel good today, and yeah, but some days you can get sick. You know, it says always people have a negative connotation, you know. I try to stay away from those people. They just bring me right down. I don't oh. know how you feel, but I just I, same, same way. You know, you, when you have it's like when you have that coworker that you get up every morning and think, oh, I gotta go in and you know see Judy, Bobby, Tommy, whoever that might be, and they're just gonna ruin my day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah and you dread, you dread. Sometimes you dread even going places because you know no matter what's gonna happen, that person's gonna bring you down. Exactly. And then, you know, so how do you tell them they're full of, you know, what? I mean, <laughs> well, I think at some point they either get, you know, singled out from the herd, you know, who's having a good time. 
uh, or they or they learn to join the herd and become part of you know the progress and having some fun. Yeah. You know, it's nothing worse than going to a job every day that you don't like. Oh my God! Uh, or a coworker torture. that's going to be sitting across from you all day and you're just yeah. waiting for it. Yeah. You know, th there there's. I like to think, and you know, I, I try and get here every day to get around, see everybody, or you know, the offices I can, depending on where I'm needed. But there, there's a, there's a camaraderie here within departments, and then there's the inner department uh, abuse, and you know, yeah. tomfoolery that gets everybody through the day. You know, uh, everybody here is a tough job. Dave, you're so right. Because as the mayor of, of of the town, if you came into this building with an attitude problem. If you came in here with negativity, it filters right down to everybody else. Absolutely. You, especially if you're going to, and if you have that attitude, you know, it just filters right down. I know as the CEO of my company, when we had, you know, I had things on my, but if I walked in and I was upset, boy, all of a sudden the news department and advertising departments would, would get depressed. And, um, but at least you keep things jovially here. You don't do anything here, but at least I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. All right, let's talk about the city of Pottsville. I love this town. It's great. It really is good. You know, I, I met a lot of great people. Hopefully, I'll meet more. What's happening now? We got Memorial Day. We have, we have some Memorial activity. Day coming up on Memorial Day. You know, we start the day with what's called the Memorial Mile. It's a downhill race from 18th Street on Market uh, into Garfield Square. Uh, so that, that's how we start our day. And, and that's always it's great because it's all ages, you know, come out. And run it, walk it, and, and it's downhill. And then they, you know, they, they're timed and they do rewards at, uh, you know, at the end of the race in the square. And then, uh, and then we have our Memorial Day ceremony in the square where myself, city council, and elected officials, uh, you know, get up and remember why, why the day is so special and why we're all together and, you know, remembering those who gave the ultimate for us to be, you know, free society today. This year we have a great uh, speaker. I uh, happen to have grown up with him since I was four or five years old. Uh, he's a retired Brigadier General from the Army. He's a helicopter pilot. Uh, <clears throat> retired Brigadier General Robert Allison, born and raised here on the east side of Pottsville and has a pretty impressive uh, record on, on how he got to be a Brigadier General. Uh, so we're glad to have him, of course, the local color guard, uh, we'll have uh, local, I believe the 3rd Brigade Band will be playing, doing the typical Memorial Day songs. High school students, uh, our Winter Carnival queens, all playing a part wow. in, in you know, reading poems, uh, reading who, you know, we have our Hometown Heroes banner. And uh, every year, you know, families add more, you know, more faces to the to the banners and uh, you know they will read off the the new ones that we're putting up this year so it, it you know it's a nice nice hometown what I call my hometown Memorial Day in Garfield Square one of the prettiest areas we could possibly do it in yeah. I know the the streets and parks department has been out there polishing it up planting flowers and making yeah. it look good so that that'll be our Memorial Day and then we'll come out of that, and uh, our pool is uh, ahead of schedule and r you know, ready to go. They'll kind of do a soft opening on June 3rd, uh, get the new employees used to it. Don't promote it a whole lot. The following week, June, June 10th, we go to full-time summer hours. Uh, so you know, our pool will be ready to go. And you know, like I said, I'm proud of our best-kept secret, the, adopt the adaptive uh, swimming program out there. Look forward to next time we'll go out and we'll do our show next from there. Next we're going to be on the location. You know, so that, that'll be exciting. Let's get back to Memorial Day, okay? Sure. So if it, what happens if it rains? We don't allow it to rain on our Memorial okay. Day. Okay. Well, no, uh, actually we do have, the. there's a church at the end of the square yeah. who, that is our, we don't do a rain date, we just move indoors. Okay, uh, nice. They also host in the morning. So the event still takes place? It still takes place, okay. yep. Rain or shine, we'll be in the square so what do you tell them on Memorial Day for those of the people who won't be there? Well, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a remembrance. It's a remembering, you know, to honor those who have given their lives. Uh, it's a way for us to honor, you know, a lot of our, our, our Pottsville residents have served in various wars, uh, you know, to honor them uh, that day. It, you know, it's a bringing of community together. It's, you know, right before you break for the hot dogs, you know, hamburgs and your, 
your cold beer and soda picnic, you know, come and remember what the day's about. Come with your, you know, your neighbors, your family. Uh, join, join the citizens in the square. Dave, do you find that younger people, uh, maybe in their 20s, uh, young in high school, college students, um, maybe up to 30s, do they have the same feeling about Memorial Day and what it means like people who've lived through it? You know, we've seen our, my relatives, uh, you, your friends who have died in the war, have suffered, uh, some of them even until today. Do they have the appreciativeness that, that we have? You know, Sam, I, I think there is a generational difference. And, and I, I was thinking of this in, in relationship to something the other day. <clears throat> And there, there are the twenty-somethings and, and and younger, even in the high school. You know, that student or that twenty-something, I'll even go to thirty-something, who's who you look at and you've met and talked to, and and you know that they're going to be successful at whatever they do. They have that attitude. I believe those those individuals still do. They they can't live it as far as the feeling of their generation being involved, although a lot, a lot of that generation is. They've served in Afghanistan and yes. you know, all the other world conflict that's going on. And you know, there's a lot of them that do or know a friend. And I think they appreciate it. And we'll see them in the square. That's great. And then there's yeah. the, the, the part of the generation that just can't relate to it either. You know, if nobody in the family was ever in. Yeah. They have no interest in it. But I, I think as a whole, there, there is still that, you know, w without our armed forces, we wouldn't be the United States that we are. They don't get, to me, they don't get enough respect for what they've done because I've seen people who've lost their families in the Afghan, their loved ones in the Afghan war, I've seen them in the Vietnam people. They didn't ask for that. They, you know, I remember talking to a veteran. Uh, we have a veteran show with Janine that we run here and also in the Hazleton market. Um, and he was telling me, he says, Sam, he said, it was, you know, some of these protesters, he said, I don't mind if they protest. He said, but when I see them burning the flag, he said, I get so emotional when I see them, the disrespect of the U.S. flag, you know, these ra some of the radicals. And, you know, I could only imagine how he must feel. He lost a lot of his friends in uh, Afghanistan. It, it just breaks your heart. It really does, you know. I'm so happy that the town of Pottsville does the things, you know. I'm sure a lot of towns do, do a lot of activities. There's, there is a lot. Of, you know, I, I was talking to one of the gentlemen who do the presenting of flags on Memorial Day. Uh, he was... He was actually in the square putting up his flag holders on our on our dais. So uh, uh -huh. he said, uh, "I want to make sure we have a place to put our flags when we're done." And uh, he was telling me his schedule for the weekend. And if, if there's a town that's, I'm going to say, you know, touching or, or close to Pottsville, the, him and his his group of veterans are are doing the presentation of flags and. I, I think he told me about six different, six to eight different towns are going to be That's at between, great. you know, Sunday and Monday. That's good. That's great. Uh, now, we all pay our taxes here in Pottsville, right? Uh, well, it's, we it's, hope. It, it, we hope it's right. The girl coming up next, uh, Taryn Dragna, uh, she's been at City Treasurer for two years. What does she do? What does it mean, you know, uh, and um, listen. Uh, we got to pay the bills. Uh, however, look what you get in return. We come back, we'll talk to Taryn and find out what's happening in city and our city treasurer. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Samuel Sancho, folks. Uh, remember 24-7 SSPTV.com. Now, keep in mind, uh, every day uh, on the Comcast 190 in the greater Pottsville area, we're on from 7 to 11 p.m. with all of our programming. And of course, uh, the uh, Service Electric Cable Vision uh, in uh, Greater Hazleton Channel 13 and our HD Channel 513, 24-7, all of our programs. And on the Wilkes-Barre system, uh, Saturdays and Sunday evenings from 7 to 11 p.m. on Channel 92. We're here in Pottsville, uh, Mayor's office. We like to do a Mayor's Report, keeping people informed uh, and what's going on. Joining me now, uh, she takes your money. She takes your money. Yes, she does, you know. 
but it's going for a good cause. Uh, Taryn, uh, Taryn, right? Yes. Dragnum. Yes. So you are the person that we come in and pay the bills to, right? Yes. Yeah. Tell me about your office, what's it consist of, and, you know, all the good things, you know, because we, we, the mayor needs you desperately to pay some of these bills, you know. Uh, and then I'm going to tell you about a major fundraiser we're having that you're going to be the chairman of. <laughs> but that, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, tell me about your office. All money that's collected comes to my office through the city. I do taxes, solid waste, general fund comes to my office. I collect about $7 million a year. So how does this thing work? I mean, uh, is, is it just a matter of collecting the money? I mean, like, you know, do you have a budget that you have to... I show? have, each entity has its own program. I do daily deposits, go to the bank daily, balance everything out, make sure everything's right on. So there's balance and checks yes. here. Sometimes you find that, you know, uh, certainly, you know, you, you have to keep a tight ship because you, who are you accountable to? I mean, like, are the treasurer's accountable to whom? The mayor? Is he, yeah. is he accountable? The mayor. Uh, and we also work hand in hand with the county. Mm -hmm. uh, so she has to keep all those records straight that, you know, money's going to the right place. And the school district, I collect for the Pottsleria School District also. You do? Yep. So what's your background? I graduated from Pottsville High School. Yeah. And then I was a stay-at-home mom for a couple of years. I have yeah. twin sons. Oh, yeah? Yep. And then I went to beauty school. Wow. So with that, bringing that experience, you know, your, your everyday experience um, to the treasurer's office, you know, you don't set the millage. No. You're, you're, all, all you do is make sure that the bills are paid, okay? So, um, uh, and you say you also do the school district? Yes. Okay, and now, are there general funds or different funds that the money goes into? Yes, uh, so the general fund is the, for the city. Mm -hmm. The taxes are separate, the solid waste is separate. Everything is separate entities. Okay, in paying taxes, sometimes you get rewarded if you pay them, so how does that work? There's a discount phase, yeah. there's a face phase, and then there's a penalty phase. And then if you don't pay by the end of the year, then it goes into collections. Okay, so what do you advise people to do? The sooner the better. Yeah. Now, uh, we talked about attitude before, mm -hmm. okay? No one likes to pay, you know, taxes, especially. Now, do you have anything with the, uh, the tickets? If, the, if, there's, if someone's parking, no tickets, park, no. you have nothing to do with that. That's a separate fund all year. Yes. Okay. So you just basically, what, the city taxes, mm -hmm. the county taxes? The okay. school taxes. Right. Now, solid, solid waste. waste. garbage. Oh, yeah? yeah? So you then work off of um, whatever the, the legislates in terms of taxes, you you just follow through and, and you are making sure they're collecting, right? Yeah. So your words of wisdom is to pay the taxes as soon as you get them, okay? Setting budgets then, Mayor, okay, in terms of knowing what the expenses are, et cetera, she has nothing to do with that. Well, her, the outcome certainly affects it. You know, we, we know year to year, you know, in, in a perfect world, we'd have 100 percent of the people paying their taxes that doesn't happen so we basically look at a, a history of that and say you know we get 95 percent of our tax base paid and five percent we have to collect so we know we should be getting this but realistically we get that so, you, you so when we're setting our budget we need to know those numbers yeah, right you know it's nice to know the high end yeah and you know know what's more realistic and yeah. you know Taryn's been great. Do you have any input as a city treasurer in in setting any budgets? Uh, mm. I mean like what would be your your position as a city treasurer other than just receiving the money and making sure the money is distributed? I don't well. really get no I really don't have too much say okay. in the budget. Just making sure that the office, yeah how many people you have in the treasurer's department? Myself and three employees. Yeah. And we were talking, you were hearing us talk about attitude, okay? Some people come in, you know, they have to pay their bills and they may be not happy, you know. How do you handle the, the people that are, eh, really upset? I try and help everyone the best that I can. I really, truly, honestly do. There's people that come in that aren't happy. Sometimes they still leave happy. Sometimes they leave unhappy. Yeah. But I've gotten quite a few thank you notes from people, you know. Makes yeah. me feel good That's knowing nice. that yeah. I've helped 
yeah. somebody along the way makes me feel good. So let's say you have a situation where unfortunate things have happened to people that just cannot afford, and particularly with the economy today and the inflation and the, and the energy costs, which I think are completely ludicrous and ridiculous, but that's another whole story. Uh, that's a whole editorial story on Sam LaSanne's part. But, you know, how do you have anything to help these people? Because they're struggling. There is things through the state that they can apply for to help them, yes. Like elderly. Yeah. Yeah, there's tax rebates that they could apply for. How far does it go, like, when you, if you have to send someone for collection, um, how long do they have to at least try to make restitution so they, they don't get into a situation? Three years. Three years. So in other words, before you send them for collection, is it automatic, like, if, if you don't pay at the end of the year, you know, when the, 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 and if it's, oh, oh, does that automatically go to collection, or are the people notified that it's going to go to collection? If it, they're not paid by December 31st, I have to be closed out by January 15th with the county, the school district. Okay. And then they handle it, it goes to that. But they can make payments. That's when you, uh, that's when you turn it over yes. then. For, okay. But payments can be made, yes. okay. Uh, so it, basically, you, you have to stay on top of things and, and know what's going on. I think the more experience you have, the better off it is, I think, with anything. Am I correct in saying that? I send out a courtesy notice oh. every uh, November. I send out a courtesy notice to let everyone know, to remind them that their taxes weren't paid. Well, that's paid. great. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes, you know, you, you forget, you know, in, in paying. But um, hopefully, um, with good fiscal management, uh, you try to keep the taxes in, in order. Now, Taryn, you and I have to have a conversation. Okay. Okay. Uh, I know, I've noticed that, and you're, you are not to talk, okay? <laughs> now, folks, I've been pushing for this, and I think Taryn may be my person. Uh, I have a chairmanship for you, chairwomanship for you, and the city of Hazel, uh, Hazel Pottsville, is gonna, I'm sure Hazel will love it too. <laughs> Pottsville is well, um, going to read it like this because we're going to generate a lot of money. We'll be able to help these little kids. Get them toys, get them what help the senior citizens who need the help, okay? Do something for people. And uh, we're gonna have a major fundraiser, it's gonna be a major event. And that's gonna be the cutting of the hair of the mayor, okay? <laughs> now, you're gonna be the chairman. Uh, I, I've asked other people, but they sort of like, you know, I could tell that you're strong, all right? And we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna sell chances, okay? Uh, to see, um, I don't know what we're gonna have that we're gonna win yet, but. The, we're gonna have a dollar. So I figured we could raise about fifty thousand dollars. Isn't that be great? Do that I way. get to cut the hair? Now that's that'd be great, because you were a hairdresser, right? You said you were a hairdresser. You get to cut the hair, we're gonna save the hair, frame it, you know what I'm saying? And he and was, Mayor Clues gave this for all the poor kids that needed help Christmas time that have no toys, and all those seniors who had no chance to pay for their bills. He was more than kind to have his hair cut. I don't you think. And I, the city <laughs> treasurer cuts the hair. That's right. Now, my friends, I'm telling you right now, I think we're going to do that. And if he says no to those little <laughs> children <laughs> and those seniors, I don't know what kind of mayor he is. And I know Dave going back to 1999. <laughs> How am I doing, Dave? Yeah, wonderful. I, I, would, I, I would be disappointed if we didn't raffle off the, Mayor Dave's hair again. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing scary is now you got a hairdresser involved. In, but yeah. they'll be done nicely. Yeah, yeah. She'll do a great job for you, okay? Uh, but listen, Tara, thanks, Tara, for thanks, and thanks for doing the, the work that you're doing. Keep the, the attitude strong down there. Uh, you got a good man here. He I does, do. He does a good man. He does a good job here. He keeps the attitude going, and that's what I like about Dave, okay? Um, anything in closure there, Mayor? Uh, boy, you know, uh, I, I got it real quick, you know, before we go off, and then, you know, Tara's son is one of our police officers. But talking about our police officers, we had two instances lately here in Pottsville. Two, two fires, one, one in, a, in an apartment complex where there was entrapment on the second floor of the building. And one of our officers arrived first. He tried to get, he got actually made access into the building, but couldn't get to the second floor because of the smoke and fire. In, in what I can only call a miracle and probably some of the quickest thinking I could think of. He drug a kitchen table outside and then a kitchen chair, which he got up on while 
the teenage daughter was hanging from the second floor window, caught her and lowered her to the ground. Wow. Saved her life. Wow. You know, amazing. To think that quickly on his feet that and was do really that. And who and was the that? Most, most humble gentleman, one of our newest officers, Officer Raybeck. Uh, wow. Just amazing. And then we have a, a business that had a fire last Tuesday. And again, one of our officers driving by, hears the alarms going off, sees smoke in the building, gains access and outens the fire before the fire department comes. Of course, he you know, radioed it in upon you know, discovering it. You know, probably saved a business. That's great. Uh, you know, That's you, what, what can you say? And then, then yeah. our great volunteer fire department the backing best. all that up. Yeah, so, they're the uh, best. That's really, cool. really wonderful. Officer Yaus was the second one who took care of the business fire. I couldn't be prouder, you know, as, as mayor of, of the team that's in our police department, our fire department. And, and heck, right here in the building, there's a great bunch of people. Rightly so. Kudos to them. That's the good thing that happened that day. Well, my, my friends, thanks for joining us on the Mayor's Report. We'll see you next time. <laughs>